Hello, uh, good evening everyone. Um, I hope you are enjoying the time. I see some of them standing there if you want, can have a seat. Um, my name is Shankar, I'm from India and uh, I'm currently working at Adesso, mostly working in cloud migration topics in AWS and I've been doing AWS for almost eight, eight and a half years now. And uh, I thought very less spoken topic and very less used in terms of medium-sized organization would be edge computing. So then I thought, okay, fine. Uh, when I was doing certifications, why not dig deep into this and uh, maybe have some presentations on it uh, so that I can spread the word. Um, I had a privilege to use Snowcone uh, when it was uh, like in 2020, but uh, there are other services which you might hear now might be the first time for you, or if you already worked on that, I'm very happy uh, so that someone in the crowd already has a, uh, a deeper understanding on this, right? Okay. Um, so this is the agenda. I'm not sure how many of you have worked on edge services here. Of course you. <laughs> <laughs> I know of course you. And uh, any other? O or at least heard about edge services like in terms of, okay, people have heard about it, cool. So um, when I started l l learning about edge services, I was always thinking, why, n why not cloud? We just got into cloud. Now what's this edge? So. I just wanted to give an overall understanding of a little bit of what's cloud. I'm sure like 80% of here would know what's cloud, so I'm just going to skim through it and not take too much of time before we actually dive into different services in the Snow, snow family, right? And I would also explain the limitations of cloud um, and then edge computing, need for edge, and the use cases for edge, and question and answers, right? Cool. Um, in general, cloud computing is mostly used uh, to maintain IT infra. At least that's how AWS has propagated into the market. You take care of the business goals and I take care of your infra, right? And we all know it's a lie. So <laughs> we have to also do a lot of infrastructure management, uh, especially when you're using uh, you know, uh, hybrid services or EKS with Fargates. Of course, most of the things are maintained, but still you have to at least provide the infra and also the uh, you know, configurations files. Um, so when business started to develop, they slowly started to moving from on-premise to cloud, just for the simple reason is the main KPI for that is going to be uh, business don't have to depend largely on managing their infra, uh, or at least, you know, at least in the level of what they can have in on-prem. So <coughs> there is two things. When, whenever you are planning to uh, set up a project, uh, business would consider two things. One is called CapEx, second is OpEx, right? The main advantage of cloud is it has high CapEx and very less OpEx, right? So for example, you are going to have some, you are going to set up your cost management and stuff, so, uh, and then you can decide on how much your expense is going to be, of course, based on the, f based on the previous history. Uh, but at the same time, you don't have to have recurring expenses on training people, on uh, maintaining a database or doing a patch update or anything, right? So even if you want to have some um, security checks, there are advanced services like Mackey. Um, also, if you want to do anything in the uh, e instance level, you can use Inspector. So there is always a service for everything. So you don't have to reinvent something which is not existing. If it is not existing, you cannot do it in AWS, right? So that's the main reason the trend started moving. At least people that are able to take decision, planning to invest millions, they at least want to know something is they are getting out of it. Of course, there are multiple managed services which we might see today, but as a business, less, less OPEX is always good. You have some question? Oh, sorry. So then, uh, with this, everything looks fine. At least now you're able to set up your infrastructure. Um, at least manage infrastructure and also manage services. Capabilities can be provided, but when you think about large scale data migration, right? Why do we first of all need edge? The constraints with cloud is it has a network bandwidth. Of course, like you cannot, uh, you cannot do a 50 GB of file in seconds. At the same time, you have privacy concerns. Like one of the projects or one of the common uh, projects that you might come up with is there is always a guy who takes care of the security aspects. For example, if you have a federated access or if you already have some documents that are present in uh, S3, you might also, there, there, is, there would be a person that is taking care of 
doing the object locks or for any federated stuff. But if the same happens to any media level data, right, it becomes hectic for us to manage. Of course, you can use online access uh, using, maybe you can also use Direct Connect or Data Sync to man migrate it, but there is already an easier solution for this. That is what is called edge computing, right? <coughs> so how I would describe edge computing is, like, currently you have a computer. You perform some action, someone is, someone, some of the users is using the application and they are performing some action. Once they perform the action, the internet is connected then the data gets stored, right? The, it's, it's as simple as that. So have some data, store it in the cloud, let the cloud, ha cloud handle all the uh, encryption, all the privacy, everything, and then you don't have to worry. But as I said, when network becomes a constraint, or when you're thinking about uh, migrating maybe petabytes or exabytes scales of data, and trust me, these data are not going to be in SQL, right? It's all mostly in object, large files, very large scale integration, sorry, very large scale migration. Uh, during these topics, it's, it's, it's highly, highly recommended for us to use cloud, sorry, for us to use edge. Edge is simple, so when you see something as a computing system, the data is stored to the nearest. For example, if you are having a, if you are, if you are having a computer, just having some movies inside it, right? This could be the very simplest form to understand edge. And you want to migrate this movie, right? You don't know cloud, how do you do it? Only way is to do the offline transfer. And this offline transfer is, in AWS world, is called edge computing. Of course, uh, Snow, Snow Cone supports uh, both online and offline. We will talk about that in the future. But the idea for now is to make the data migration happen in offline mode, right? So this is the main need that we want to use edge. So if you're thinking about, okay, I have a user, he has a role, Everything is in database, like, you know, you don't need this. We are really talking in terms of um, if you are having a mining industry, you are in Africa, you want to, you know, have the mine data present as near as you with a continuous, uh, in, in a continuous model. And then if you want to transfer it, like you, you might have, like, you might do the research for six months, and then if you want to transfer petabytes of data, only then, or to migrate the data center itself, right, um, in terms of media files. So. These are the two use cases that can uh, be used in Edge. But of course, if you're, f there are some customers I know that also wanted to have a POC on migrating healthcare data, uh, it, it, it went south. So I'm not going to talk about that uh, today, right? So yeah, there are two scenarios I have taken uh, because from the world of cloud, we always think data as JSON uh, or as something like, okay, something has to be stored in the database. Very uh, more often than not, we uh, we prefer you know uh, uh, kind of classic storage services. But you have to little bit change your thought process and think about if you are already working on a project which has uh, needs for uh, media uploads, right? Or which already has, for example, um, I'm not sure if it's recorded. Let's say a torrent has a huge database of uh, you know p pirated movies, right? Just giving an example, so may if they have something in the data center and they want to go global, or if they want to go in cloud, uh, it's it's nearly impossible for them to do it, even if they have a direct connect or you know have some dedicated resources. It takes a hell lot of time. I can also have I also have a slide on some guesses. Uh, during that time, we can speak about how we manage exabyte scales of data. So one scenario here is like you know uh, if you if you are having a research team uh, working in Alps and uh, they are trying to find out uh, some information and recording something and storing it locally. Uh, and if they want, over a period of time, to move this uh, stored data to AWS or to any, edge computing is not only for AWS, it's, 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 it's there in all cloud. But in this case, if they want to move it to AWS, one good option could be you know, not sweating up and use snow cone or you know, snow, uh, snowball in this case, right? And um, second use case would be in the production industry. Um, so if you are having, as, as you know, taking movies with ultra, ultra HD contents has large, huge amount of data to be in place, right? And especially if these are going to be in a very remote space, like for example, deserts. Um, currently, many media houses they do is have the storage, 
go back to the uh, go back to where the internet is available and then upload it, right? Or, or even they might not also need to use until at uh, a cloud source for this. But with this interaction of edge computing, it's also possible for us to have lots of medias and upload it to the S3 and then do the post-processing in S3. So just want to set the tone. We are not really talking in terms of JSON data here. It's mostly going to be large-scale data migration for uh, like uh, media-level data or documents or uh, any other video files that you might come up with. <laughs> Sorry. OK. As I described before, uh, this brings us to AWS provides services for certain use cases, right? As it always does. So it gives configurations for you so that you can choose uh, right option for your business use cases. Um, there is something called as a Snow family. Um, it contains currently three. Um, Outpost, I wouldn't consider it to be in the Snow family. It's also not. But uh, starting with the smallest member of the Snow family is called Snowcone. Um, Snowcone, I have seen like it's kind of a tissue box. Uh, like it's, it's, it's of the size of a tissue box, so it's very easy and it's rugged, right? And the best use cases for the snow cone can be if you want to maybe migrate terabytes of data, right? Maybe two terabytes of data uh, to the cloud, but the data is not huge, you can still use it, right? And how it functions, I'll be telling up in the next slide, but I would also like to tell there is another service called um, Snowball. Uh, Snowball is kind of a CPU. We can think of like a suitcase. It's the same as Snowcone, but uh, it's, it doesn't support offline uh, access. You know, you, you, sorry, it doesn't support online. With Snowball, you can run lambdas, you know, attach, and also it, it comes up with uh, green grass, which is like you can process uh, things in line. It has computing capacity, but not with uh, not with Snowball. It's purely for migration. And uh, if happens to be if you uh, order a snowmobile, so they get you a truck, uh, which is like 40 feet long, and this is mainly for migrating data centers, right? Um, I'm yet to come up, I'm yet to meet a person that used this, uh, but I've heard uh, companies, big entities, had migrated data, but I'm not sure how, how easy was it, or I have not spoken to someone that has already used this service um, in my circle at least, right? <laughs> so, this is just an overall access, sorry, overall uh, workflow of how Snow Family works. You have to keep in mind this is kind of configuration, configurable services, right? So, there is nothing that you are going to take care apart from ordering this and spending the cost. So, it's always important for you to follow this process. It's very simple. You go to the console. Click the snowball if, if, if you need snowball, or click snow cone if you need snow cone. You, you would be prompted with certain configurations, right? Like I said, snow cone is the only member that supports online and offline uh, feature, and uh, it comes up with two variants. One is with uh, storage, second with is with compute, right? And you get a lot of options of selecting uh, what you need, but uh, in, in, in the data migration use case, you would go for storage uh, based thing. Of course, if you want to process some data, you can also configure it when you are creating the uh, creating the migration order. They call it as a migration order, right? And once you have created that, uh, AWS gets the notifi notification for this, and then they actually ship it to you, like you know, as a as a physical uh, mission. So once that mission is with you. Um, have you have anybody of you worked with Ops Center in AWS? There's a service called Ops Center. Okay, maybe not because it's it's to my knowledge it's too 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 close with the services, right? Um, so once you get the once you get a snow cone or snowmobile snowball, what you do is you have something called as Ops Center. You you install Ops Center, and there would be a IP address for the for the snow for the snow cone. You have to enter that. And also, you would receive a code just to maintain the security, right? So, through the Ops Center, you can select on from where the data is going to be connected. You have two options. You need to either have the USB uh, C code, or you can also uh, ask this uh, from the AWS. But yeah, I mean, it's it's very simple. It's just a USB C that you use, right? So this is how 
you, you set up the, you do the initial validation, and before that, it's, it's encrypted with KMS. So you also have to select the KMS keys when you're, uh, when you're uh, ordering the snow cone or snowball. And with this, you can, I mean, I would joke it as data in REST, encrypted data in REST and encrypted data in transit because when they take it actually in the truck, I consider it as a transit, uh, it's also encrypted because once you create the KMS key, encrypt the data based on that, there is no way someone can steal your data, right? Because even if someone steals the box, uh, the key is in the cloud. So that's how AWS maintains high data integrity uh, in terms of security for, uh, for all the Snow families, right? And um, yeah, back to the ops app, once you have configured it, it's just you have to plug it uh, to, the, to the device that has the data, upload it, um, and then again, you have to uh, you have to ship it to AWS based on the based on the region that you want your data to be stored. Of course, you have to configure this. You have to select the S3 bucket when you create this. Uh, when you create the import job, you also have to create the S3 bucket where you want to store the data, right? Um, so once the snow, once the box is shipped, then it's the responsibility of the AWS to actually upload it. And you can also see it in in progress uh, in in Snowcone, for example. S sorry, in the S3, for example, right? So this is the overall functionality. He, like, um, for for a large scale data migration, I cannot uh, I cannot thank AWS enough uh, for providing services like this, because it 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 has. When you talk in terms of petabytes, forget about exabytes, right? There is no other way. It would give uh, a lot of uh, overhead for if you want to do it with the connected service, or I also know certain firms, they do it in hybrid. Uh, maybe they buy some outposts and you know try to uh, have it the sense have some um, confidential information, so even though it's in the same VPC, but they want to store it in the outpost so that they see that, okay, there is a rack where my data is not stolen, right? I can see the data, even if they cannot. So that's with Snowcone. Um, and with Snowball, it's the same flow, right? But I've just made some, um, an example that we just discussed on uh, video um, uh, media based file transfer. So how you do is once you have the vi once you have the video, you just ingest the video, and similar to snowball snow cone setup, you also have to set up the snowball. The process is the same, uh, but in this case, it's more for the storage optimized, right? And then you transfer the data, like you s chip the call in, and then transfer the data. Then you do the verification and encryption. Like you know, this this key has already been set when you start when you create the job for the import, and then tell to the AWS that the job is done, or ship it to them based on the region that you want to import, which you would have selected in the first place, and then AWS takes care of it, right? <laughs> and then, so this is the question that I wanted to ask: um, Can 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 you can you just guess an exabyte of data? How long it takes it to transfer to? if not with uh, Snow Family, right? Just imagine that you have a big data center here uh, full of media files. You want to make it to AWS or any other cloud. Uh, first, can you can someone tell what's the possibilities? How can you do this? Or just guess how much time you think it would take. A rough guess. Even I didn't get it correct. Nobody gets it correctly. Yeah, how many? Uh, okay. Okay, so with 100 G, sorry? One? One <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> to stay in the same data center, yeah? Any guess? 10, 50 years on the, yeah. Yeah, it's correct. So I'm considering, uh, I'm considering it has at least 10 GBPS, which is a lot, to be frank, uh, and as a bandwidth. So it takes about 20 years uh, to, to transfer your data. Uh, by the time you might not even know if, <laughs> If the company has the same name or it's been acquired by someone else, right? So it's <laughs> no. These data are like you know, uh, uh, like a raw data, right? So yeah, maybe it's not relevant anymore. It would be there as a as a as a media files, but maybe it's not relevant anymore. That's true. It takes uh, in one of the reinvent when it was introduced, uh, the numbers was 26 years, but I recently researched it's not now 26 years. They've reduced the, with higher bandwidth, you can reduce the years, but it's in decades, right? We are talking in terms of decades. So during this kind of situation, this is for exabyte amount of data, right? 
So during these kind of situations, one might think AWS should rescue us. So yeah, it has. And it's called, uh, I mean, uh, for, for XRBH, there is no other services you can use with AWS but for, um, for, but for the snowmobile. So if you have a dozen of snowmobile, it can be reduced to six months. I know it's a lot, but you are comparing it with 20 years or something around that time. Uh, provided if your internet is stable and also you know the data data uh, integrity is always present, right? <laughs> so this is the power of any snow snow device, uh, any snow family devices, and um, like when I was when I was involved in a when I was involved in an engagement where they have to capture aerospace related stuff, where in the flight you don't have uh, much of internet connectivity. Uh, I think these days some of the flights comes with uh, native storage, right? Even though they they they, they store data, they they are already having it in their uh, it in their boxes, and then they up they they upgrade they upload to the cloud if they are using cloud, right? So, uh, but for very large scale migration or any offline kind of data transfer, I just want to let you know that you can also think about you know moving it to Snow Family or any other offline services. Um, otherwise, you have to take a lot of consideration. If it is a SMS, it's good. Even if it's a database migration system, you know we have inbuilt solution for it. Uh, mostly, it's not going to take years, right? But if it is for media-related information, I would highly uh, recommend you to have this in mind. Uh, if you come across a project, if you're working in a media company, or if you're working in uh, research-based, mining-based, in any of the, even for the construction industry, it's, it's really, really helpful. And uh, yes, with the snowmobile, the process is the same. Uh, but for the snowmobile, you need to have an initial consultation with the, with the, with the AWS personals. Because uh, until two years back, I think it was not available in Europe before it launched in Milan, right? Um, so uh, in Europe, it was initially launched in Milan. So they also, they also need to know how you are, uh, where you want your data to be stored. You would have a person personalized uh, you know, meet meeting with them uh, before you order one. And then uh, instead of sending a box, they send a truck, driver comes to your home, uh, sees your data center maybe, and then uh, using, uh, in this case, you don't have to use USB-C, but you know they have uh, higher bandwidth ports, and then it's totally, totally responsibility of AWS engineers to make sure the data is transmitted, uh, and then they, s they take the truck back, uh, and then they upload it to your region-specific um, uh, regions in your region-specific account. So. As I said, this is just a small illustration. I took it from uh, 2022 reInvent uh, or Summit, I'm not sure. But uh, this, is, this is the, uh, how do I say, this is the very overview of what can be supported for what use cases. Like I said, if you have TBs of data, you can still use Nocon, um, which is very handy. Uh, but if you have up to 10 petabytes of data, the only way to go is you cannot use Snowcon at all. The only way is to, you can of course order snowmobile, but it's not used for this case. Uh, but if you have exabytes, you have no other options, right? So it's in the very right corner. Um, at the same time, uh, one important thing is online and offline feature. Um, uh, like it's only available in Snowcone because it does come with uh, two modes of operation. Uh, one, is with, uh, one is with compute and second with storage, right? Compute optimized and storage optimized. You can select Lambda functions when you create the uh, snow cone, and you know that's how you attach it. And uh, the most important factor for is this is it's as I said, it's on transit encrypted, as well as at rest encrypted, um, and also when you are having S3, if you configure that, uh, it's also encrypted there. Um, so yeah, this is some of the key parameters that you would consider before uh, evaluating any projects that needs edge computing. And I think I also have a small video uh, about the then vice president of AWS when they announced uh, Snow, uh, Snowcone uh, has given a small presentation on us, right? It's just going to be two minutes, but it's very informative. Um, if, if, if you would like, I would just play the video as the next slide. Okay. 
Hey, Bill. Hey, Jeff. Guess what I got? Um, a haircut? Uh, yes, I did, but actually I want to talk about this new snow cone. It's an edge processing computing device. It has data transfer and data storage. It's about the size of a tissue box. Bill, I think you actually have me at edge computing. It's got four gigs of RAM, uh, two virtual CPUs, eight terabytes of usable storage on there. Awesome. It runs uh, green grass. It can act as an IoT gateway. It's got Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Comes preloaded with data sync. <laughs> Standard e-ink label on the front, so it automatically ships its Itself, which is pretty cool. It's got a USB-C for power and also a USB-C data port. So it's really quite flexible. And there's an optional battery pack that you can snap on the bottom. Wow, okay. So some of our customers actually need to use these devices in pretty harsh environments. Is this a rugged device? Yep. Will it work in freezing temperatures? Absolutely. How about in the desert? Yep, really hot environments, even like next to a welder even when it's too hot to touch. Could we take it to a research ship using a drone? Yep, because it's four and a half pounds, you can snap it right on a drone. In fact, okay. uh, we were using it today to create a 3D model for the best arrangement for solar panels. Now, what about hospitals or industrial sites? That also. Tactical edge locations, transportation, logistics? Yeah, all of those. All right, so the data and the device, they're both secure? Just like a snowball, the data is multi-layer encrypted, and so companies like Deluxe, for example, with their One Vision, can use it for secure movie distribution and feel secure about it in transit. So it seems actually like this would be useful in a lot of places, the public sector, yes. defense, intelligence, and even disaster relief efforts. Yeah, it does a whole bunch of things. It's great for lightweight analytics on the edge. It can act as an IoT hub, uh, machine learning, where you're doing processing of data in real time. Mm. It's got containers and EC2 instances on it, mm. and it lets people connect to the cloud really easily. So what's the difference between a snow cone and a snowball? So the wonderful thing about snow cone is part of the snow family so it has all of the rugged capabilities all the security capabilities all the shipping capabilities all of those things just like its bigger brother the snowball edge but the primary difference is of course size weight compute those kinds of things so i think i got it small rugged portable secure and built to run outside of a data center is that about right yep and puppies like it how about that <laughs> would this fit in my mailbox it can certainly do that That's really cool. Can I take a look? Yeah, here. Got it. Oh, wow. That's awesome. <laughs> okay, with that, uh, with, with that, my presentation comes to an end. Uh, I'm looking forward for questions. And if you would like to stay connected with me, this is the QR code. I hope it works. Uh, it's a LinkedIn code. Uh, but yeah, let's see. Yeah, for questions. Yes. Thank, thank you very much for the talk. Oh, wait. <laughs> All right. um, so what are the, um, in terms of the, like, the, the, have you done projects with Snowball? Yes, I have Snow Cone. Snow Cone, okay, cool. Um, so what was the, like, like, the overall experience, like, in terms of, like, you know, having to connect the device, transferring data, then shipping it back, like what sort of time frames did you have, w were you dealing with like, like from the time you s send the device back to the time the data is available to you in S3? Like yes. Um, so uh, I actually forgot to tell about the costing of this. This yeah, actually yeah, comes, uh, yeah, this actually comes with this question uh, because uh, as a service fee, um, I mean, they have 300 rows for costing for different uh, configurations, but it, it's between 300 to 400 for the service fee. And uh, for the first 10 days, for example, like you order the snow cone and it's in transit, and when they take back to the data center, they don't charge anything. But if it takes more, more than 10 days for you to be um, uh, you know, transferring your data, then they have a flat fee of, I think, 30, 30, uh, US, 30 US dollars, I think. Um, and uh, my experience with this, with this was new because this is some kind of a service. You have to work on that to know it. Um, of course, you can know what the service is, but you know, uh, it's, it's a different experience because it's something like you order something, someone gives you something, you know, and uh, you, you make the data process. We also requested a AWS um, uh, chief partner or associate to be with us 
to do the first uh, first time uh, first time uh, testing because if 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 we are misconfiguring something or if we are just going through the documentation we were afraid that we would mess up something so uh, we also was uh, able to do this for the first thing and uh, it's mostly in the aerospace because we were developing uh, when I was back in India uh, for a, for a Dutch uh, airlines we were developing a product that actually wanted this capability right um, so we ordered it was in the U the, the region of e uh, Netherlands and then it's a uh, someone has to be there to port it and then you know fill the data it takes like almost uh, for for data like with snow cone since it supports only 10 TBs of data uh, it could it could be done uh, maybe in few few days uh, right and once it moves back to the AWS it's um, it's it's very fast in terms of uploading to S3 uh, because they they connect it with your account on a high bandwidth network right so this overall experience was about a month even though they say it's like in a few weeks you since you are going to do this for the first time you would require an assistance from them at the same time you have to order the stuff if the packaging is transfer pa transfer uh, packaging is delayed, you also have to consider that. In any which case, if something got delayed, AWS doesn't take that into account, right? So uh, you still have to spend uh, thirty dollars for every extra day that you are going to keep it. Um, so yeah, my experience was totally new. It was the first time that I did it, um, and yeah, it, it was great. I, it actually changed my mind. So whenever I hear about migration, and if I'm if I'm hearing migration on uh, medias. I'm always like the guy who takes the hands up and says, hey, why don't we try edge computing? And people are like, what's that? Then I have to take this lecture again to them. So, yeah. Well, what's the bandwidth of the, uh, the device? Is it 10 gigabit per second or larger, 25? I'm sorry, which, which the band? The bandwidth of the connected device. Bandwidth of the connected Snowcom. device, yeah. I mean, uh, it comes with 25, uh, it, it depends, right? For snowmobile, you can also have multiple connectors because mm -hmm. you are, in snowmobile case, you are connecting a data yes. center, most probably, yes. right? Um, so it, it, it can it can vary, uh, but the most thing that uh, would come up with is 15 gigab gigabits, gigabytes per second, uh, and uh, which is realistic, I would say. Actually, we considered for a customer, but it, uh, I mean, it doesn't available for every region. The snow right, model, right. Model I mean, I uh, for the Europe, as I said, only in 2021, I think it was introduced in Milan, mm -hmm. right? It was highly for the U.S. region before, and uh, at the same time, it was also introduced in India uh, during this time. Uh, but yeah, it, 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 you have to also check uh, before ordering snow mobile. You have to have a call with the customer. Sorry, you have to have the call with the AWS to really understand if they can satisfy this requirement, right? Um, else you can also do it with 10 snow, <laughs> snow, snow, uh, snowballs, oh. but uh, yeah, it, it has a requirement constraint. But I think now it's available uh, throughout. And I have one another question about the export policy. How, I mean, who is managing the, uh, how can I say, the custom clearance or border clearance about the data movement? Which data movement? The data movement from one country to another. One country to another. Yeah. So you who have is, who is con or who is in charge of this data movement, AWS, or I mean, who is controlling? How can I say? Who gets the clearance for this? Um, is the customer responsible for that, or no. AWS is the handling those uh, custom clearance? It's a shared uh, responsibility because uh, it's kind of you need to specify which region, even though S3 is global, you need to specify which region the data is going to be transmitted in, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that would be the first step that you do. Second thing is the compliance. If you are missing any compliance, for example, you have uh, HIPAA-related uh, data in your S3 bucket, AWS, either you have to inform them or you, know, you have to have a mitigation plan of not exporting it in the first hand, mm -hmm. right? If something needs compliance, mostly the compliance is going to be, it has to be encrypted, even if it's going across the borders, right? But it's very region specific. You cannot do something from Europe to US. It's 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 not valid. Um, so in this case, you would select a region at the very first beginning, and the AWS tells you if they support it. In Snowball and Snowcone, they do, but with Snowmobile, they would have to know it in advance um, to tell that okay, fine, for this region we can do. And also, it's a truck they are going to send, so uh, it has to be uh, you know very well cleared in advance. 
But for compliances, if you if you miss it up, for example, as I said, if you are having some HIPAA records or if you're having some PIs in place, you would have to run Mackey uh, to, to check the S3, right? Um, which would tell if any sensitive information is there and you know you can get the report before doing it. But if you if you do not disclose it, uh, you know it's a shared responsibility. So if they trust it, it's an encrypted state. But if you are doing it cross borders, I'm not sure if it's allowed, but you have to have this in place before you so order customer, this. Customer is responsible for that. For, for, for the, for for the, the country, the yeah, for, 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 for one. I think it's not al also allowed. They, they need your region to make it possible. Just because you say, hey, I'm in Ireland, come, come with the mobile, they don't do it. They check your, they validate your uh, bucket configurations and stuff. And then you have to also select which bucket you want to import it to. Um, then they do it. And another important point, importing to bucket doesn't charge, but exporting from bucket does charge. With snowmobiles case, it's 0 0.001 uh, dollars per one GB, but that would cost in thousands and thousands, right? Uh, if you compare with uh, exabit scale. Um, so yeah, 